Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of Binging with Bundiv. As you can see, we are in full Babish attire, but obviously, Babish we are not. Now, a few weeks ago, our beautiful friend Andrew made a fantastic video on Bolognese, a traditional Italian dish that I myself grew up with. Now, while I'm in no way a purist, my very Italian grandmother is. When I showed my family the video, they were visibly and unreasonably angry. So I thought, why not show you guys how to make Nonna Bundiv's version? She has never in my entire life ever told this recipe to anyone, but here I am betraying her trust for you guys. Now, bolognese doesn't have to be difficult at all. In fact, some of these ingredients and methods will seem heretical to the average Babish viewer, and even most Italians in general. So let's begin. Every bolognese starts off with a soffritto, like Babish mentioned. Say it with me now, Andrew. Soffritto. Roll those R's. This soffritto consists of onions, carrots, and celery. Strangely enough, when I interviewed my nonna about the recipe, she skipped celery. And when I asked her about it, she literally said, F*** celery. You don't have to add it if you don't want it, but we're gonna use it. Chop up a quarter of an onion, 50 grams of celery. This part's for you, Stacy. Watch out for those fingers. And 100 grams of carrots. Unlike the actual Babish Studios, we don't have any tiny whisks, but we do have tiny sieves, and tiny food processors. It may seem blasphemous, but Nonna Rosa swears by the wonders that this cute compact cutter does to her sauce by processing the sofrito into itty bitty bits. Put that lid on that bad boy and blitz your sofrito until it becomes very fine, almost like an orange oniony paste. Once you've sufficiently blitzed the calzone out of it, transfer the sofrito to a medium-sized saucepan, along with two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Now it's time to transfer the sofrito to the stove, where my truly atrocious camera work can be seen. Sorry, Babish, all I've got is my ancient iPhone, but in true rustic fashion, we make do no matter how much our setup may be scuffed. Set your stove to a medium-low flame, and let these little guys simmer until the onions become translucent and the carrots soften. This is where Nona's recipe gets a little crazy. Bear with me now. To the sofrito, we will be adding our minced beef. And yes, completely frozen, rock solid ground beef. Just beef. At this point, we lower the flame to its lowest setting. I know what you're thinking. I was thinking it too, but if you don't want to feel the wrath of Nona Rosa's wooden spoon, this is what you have to do. Now, I'm sure there's an easier way to do all this, but here it goes. Once our beef ball hits the heat, every time the beef gets a little bit of color, we'll be continuously flipping and scraping off the bits and chunks that have been thawed and browned until our beefy boy is a ball no more. Time for Nona's second super secret. After the beef has been sufficiently browned, we have to add half a glass of wine. Any wine will do, according to our sweet Nona. At this point, she's become yours as much as she is mine. I chose red because I thought it would be best with the beef. Turn up the heat to high and continue cooking the sofrito until the wine has completely evaporated. At this point we can add our own super secret ingredient, of which we must never speak of again. I added it as a sort of homage to Babish for using nutmeg in his first version, and I'm expecting to be banished from Italy by the Pope himself, but hey, we're rebels. A dash of cinnamon. Oh my god. Once the wine has evaporated from our sofrito, add salt to taste and let's get started with the real blasphemy. Add half a bottle, or in this case, 350 grams of tomato sauce. Yes, Italians use the jarred stuff. I'll give you a moment to recover. Okay, great. To this final sauce, we have to add a glass or a ladle, these are none metrics, of water. Bonus brownie points if you use the starchy pasta water. And of course, always adjust more salt to taste. Set aside your glorious sauce on low heat for actually two to five minutes so the flavors can, as Nonna Rosa puts it, become a friends. Keep in mind that the longer you leave it on the heat, the thicker the sauce. So feel free to thicken it to your liking. Now let's move on to making our pasta. Let's begin with an ocean's worth of coarse salt and bring the water to a boil. Now the pasta that I recommend are either rigatoni or penne rigate, which basically means penne, 
with little ridges so as to grab hold of that sweet, sweet sauce. For the amount of sauce we have, we're gonna throw in 350 grams of rigatoni. Also, if your grandmother's like mine, she'll put her pasta in cute little jars. Look how cute that is. Give those a stir and let them sit until they are al dente, which basically means they're cooked but with a little bit of bite to it. Here's the part where my grandmother judges me the most, making sure the pasta is al dente. Give those little suckers a taste, and when you think al dente has been achieved, toss them into a pasta strainer. Place the pasta back into its own saucepan and make sure to ladle the sauce into the pan, because too much sauce would make the dish soupy. Toss and stir to coat evenly. The final step is to plate and garnish. Toss a ladle of pasta onto a plate, an additional dollop of sauce on top, and do yourself a favor and get one of these. And treat yourself to some freshly grated Parmesan cheese, or Parmigiano Reggiano. But I didn't have any on me, so in order to increase the amount of Mamma Mia's, I'll be using pre-grated Parmesan cheese instead. If you really want to impress Nonna, hit it with a leaf of basil on top, but I didn't have that either. If you think this recipe was hard to follow, it's because I had to decipher it from this. Okay, allora, parlami del soffritto. Del soffritto. Soffritto. Quando vede che è bello, bello stretto, ci che vuol dire stretto? Ci mette lo, eh, il vino. Che vuol dire stretto? Eh, capi, non è morbido, blè, no? Un po' asciutto. Eh, un po'... Un... Blè. Un po'... Un po'... <ride> non mi viene la parola. Non fritto, cotto sciascio. Vabbè. Quanto carote, quanto sedono, quanto cipolla? Ah, no, io non le peso, faccio così, però... Come li fai? Le... Che... Se vede la carota che è grande, mi basta quella. Pulisci la carota. <ride> Qua... <ride> Io fa... no, il peso no, non c'è il peso, perché se la carotina è il carotone. E eh, io mo che ci dico a questi quanto eh, pesa? E così, da me la carota ti faccio vedere stasera. Quanto fa vedere? <ride> così la carota, così, così. Una <ride> bella carota. <ride> un bel pizzico di sale. Quanto è un bel pizzico? <ride> Qu quanto è un bel pizzico? Due così. Due Così due, o così? No, così. due cucchiai grandi. Ma quanto è un bel pizzico? Così, così, così? E no, dipende. Dipende da che? Dipende dalla mano che ti viene. <ride> Marco, metti due cucchiai di sale, cucchiai grandi. Bello giro ogni tanto, ogni tanto, minimo. Clic, 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 per un Clic, clic, clic. Se clic, tiene clic. il basilico. Che vuol dire clic, 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 clic? Se tiene il basilico ce lo metti. Uh -huh. Che vuol dire clic clic clic? Spiega. E piano piano. Click, piano, click, piano. Click, click. <laughs> Now let's see how this small simple case of sacrilege tastes. As you can see, I did the classic babish handshake, but I think the cinnamon may have ruined the taste I grew up with. But what does the master think? I had to coax her out because she's very camera shy. Assaggia, metti il sugo. Che dici? Buonissimi. Sicuro. Saporite. Critica. Tutto a posto. Critica. Mm? Critica. Niente. Onesto. Mm. Onesto, sincero. Dovevano cuocere un altro... Minutino. La pasta? La pasta, però il, il sapore è buono. Ok. <ride> Grazie. E non me ne prendo un altro. Vai, vai. <ride> I loved doing this recipe, not just because I love making memes and scuffed versions of great things, but because I finally got to involve my grandmother in one of my greatest passions, making people happy. 